Hey YouTube, it's Navy98. Today I have the first of a series of two videos that I'll be doing on a widely used but little known piece of weaponry, at least to us in the US, um, used during the Second World War. So I actually teased this uh, a long time ago at the beginning of the year when I was talking about all the big ideas that I had for my channel. And over the course of the year I uh, managed to uh, acquire all the components that I needed to do this video. So better late than never. So many of you guys are familiar with the rifle grenade launchers that U.S. soldiers used on the M1 Garand during World War II, as well as the Korean War. Like the ones that you see here, you have the uh, rifle grenade launcher that goes on the end of the barrel of the M1 Garand. You have the sight and you have the actual uh, launcher that they would put the grenade in. And although it makes sense that other countries uh, use them, you may not know as much about those other countries' rifle grenade launchers. So what I have for you today is an example of the main type of rifle grenade launchers or Gewehr Granat Garat that the Germans used during World War II. So the grenade launcher here was more commonly referred to as the Schiessbecker, which literally translates into a shooting cup. So for the first video, I'm going to cover the actual Schiessbecker itself, uh, along with some of the accessories. And then I'll have a second video later on, which will cover the types of rifle grenades that they used uh, during World War II. So the Schiessbecker was first issued in January 1942, and the production ran until May 1944, with a total number produced on the order of one and a half million. As you can see from the production numbers that I posted here, almost half of these were manufactured during the year 1943. I haven't seen a ton of these on the collector market, uh, and the ones I, I have seen tend to be in relic or dug condition, like the one that I've acquired here. Um, I assume most of these were either lost on the battlefield or melted down uh, for scrap metal late in the war or after the war. This one that I found here, I purchased off of eBay. I'm not sure where it was recovered from. I, I Presumably the Eastern Front, because that's where a lot of the dug items on eBay were recovered from. Uh, for a while there, there was also a bunch of reproduction models that you could buy online for reenactors. Um, typically, those don't have the rifle chamber that you would find in the original device, though, though. So let's go ahead and take a look at the actual Schiessbecker. So the Schiessbecker is a 30 millimeter rifle grenade launcher that fits over the end of the rifle barrel, as many of the rifle grenade launchers of the time were. Uh, it can easily be disassembled for portability, so this actual um, portion just unscrews itself and just screws right in there. This is the portion that clamps onto the, to the end of the rifle, and you just unscrew this, take it apart, slide it over the barrel of the rifle, and then reassemble it. Not sure if you can see inside, uh, it's pretty hard to see, but... It does have rifling. There are eight lands. And again, this is a relic one, so uh, although it's worn, it's still, uh, you can still see the rifling inside. So that's the Schiessbecker, again, 30 millimeters. The two main kinds of rifle grenades that were used were high explosive, also referred to as anti-personnel, like this one. And you'd also have anti-armor grenades, uh, like this particular one. Again, both of these fit right inside the barrel. And again, these are rifled, as you can see. So they fit right inside. We'll take a detailed look at these different kinds of rifle grenades in the next video, uh, as well as some other ones that I have, like this propaganda grenade. So this Schiessbeck was mainly designed to fit the Car 98K, but it can also be fitted to the Gewehr 3340. Um, you also had models made for the G41 and G43, as well as the Sturm Gewehr STG44. You also see copies of these made for the Italians, uh, and then the Chinese also had a very similar launcher uh, for their rifles. So typically each squad of every rifle 
uh, Jaeger and Engineer companies would be equipped with one set of rifle grenade devices, and each artillery battalion would get two set two sets. So a set consisted of one sheath specker, which is the actual launcher itself. You get a pouch, which is this right here, and this is a repro. undo the clasp and then inside is a handy slot for the sheath specker and also, also uh, the tool to disassemble it. You'd also get a sight uh, which I don't have but again it would be similar to the sight uh, on an M1 Garand uh, that would fit to the side of the to the rifle but as I'll talk about this in a bit, they actually ended up doing away with these and just uh, through training, you really didn't need the sight. The soldiers really didn't need the sights. They'd also get carry pouches like this one you see here. So in the carry pouch, they could ha uh, carry 30 HE grenades and either 20 large or 30 regular anti-armor grenades. Infantry trailers would also carry two filled boxes, so a box like you see here, uh, with 30 rounds of HE rifle grenades each, two filled boxes of armor piercing, and again, either 30 or 20 rifle grenades, depending on the size, and then four of these uh, filled carry pouches. At the company level, they would carry six boxes of uh, high explosives and six boxes of armor piercing. So go ahead and take a look now how it's attached to the rifle and follow the actual manual that the Germans published on how to use these. So here's the manual that the Germans published in October of 1942 that described the operation of the rifle grenade launcher. Uh, this is a translated version, obviously, but basically, you can see here handling, carrying along, and use of the rifle grenade. And it basically goes through everything that's entailed in carrying, storing, ammunition, uh, employment, distances for the actual sheath specker itself. Talks about all the different components. So this is the sight, which I do not have, but again, it's very similar to that M1 Garand sight that you attach to the side of the rifle. And that's what it would look like attached to the side of the K98. You would have these blank rounds that were used to fire the actual grenades. This shows you some of the different grenades. Again, how to sight this in and various effective angles and ranges. And then it goes through the different kinds of other grenades, like the propaganda grenade that I'll talk about in the next video, how to actually load the propaganda, propaganda grenade, uh, and so on and so on. So per the manual, we'll take a look at how this she specker was actually attached to the rifle, and in my case, a K98. So here's a carrying pouch that I showed you before. Again, this is a repro. Um, it's repro stamped as well. It's a leather case, which contains the actual uh, shooting cup, she she's becker, and all its accessories, including the sight and the tool. So we'll go ahead and take a look how it's attached to the rifle. So I, you may have seen this in my one of my other videos, but this is my late war uh, K98K. Um, manufactured in Czechoslovakia and then also uh, sent to Israel sometime post-war. So we'll go ahead and get this set up. All right, so the following are the steps from mounting the she specker uh, to the rifle as outlined in that German manual 4123 that I just showed you. So the first thing you're going to do is unload the rifle, make sure there's no live ammo in it, and also make sure the bore is clear of obstructions. 
Next up, you're gonna take the pouch that has the she specker, the sighting tool, and uh, assembly disassembly tool in it, and remove the she specker from the pouch. This is just a leather pouch. This is a repro. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, got a repro marking on it. Just take off the clasp. And then inside fits the she specker very nicely. Just gonna remove that. Take that out. And then, like I said, there's also a room for a disassembly assembly tool in here and the site if I were to have it. So step three is we're going to mount the sheath specker uh, on the rifle barrel with an open clamp. So just this just unscrews and it's captive and both sides unfold just like that. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and mount it on the barrel with the clamp opened, as I mentioned. So it just fits right between the cleaning rod and the barrel itself. And I'm not gonna push this in all the way, but it could get pushed in all the way. The next step was while turning it tight against the barrel muzzle, close the clamp and pull together the toggle. So we'll go ahead and close the clamp. And then you would just Screw it on until it's nice and secure on the rifle. So step five is check that the rifled tube is tightly screwed on. And as I showed you before, this section of the rifled tube uh, does unscrew. So we just make sure that this is on there very tightly. And then step six will be remove the grenade sight from the pouch and attach it to the rifle. And then this rifle would be all set up to use the she specker. So since I don't have a original sight, we'll just use these pictures for reference, uh, as well as the M1 Garand rifle sight, which is very similar, uh, though the K98 version clamps uh, over the rifle and this one uh, has a place on the side of the Garand uh, that it screws into or clamps into, but similar concept. So they were initially issued with the sight that would attach to the side of the rifle, but uh, after training, most of the soldiers didn't need the sight. And the Germans actually con discontinued their use in August of 1944. So the sight had markings for shooting the grenade from 50 to 250 meters with intervals of 25 meters on it. The rifle could be fired with the she specker attached as long as there was no grenade in the cup, but it was recommended that this only be used at short ranges since you would not have the use of your front sight, but they could fire um, the rifle with no grenade in the launcher. Um, again, just not as accurate with it. So the next video, we'll take a look at the different kinds of rifle grenades that could be fired from the she specker. Then I'll talk a little bit about how these were employed in battle. As always, if you like this kind of content, please do me a favor and hit that like button and also hit subscribe. Uh, most of you that watch my videos are not subscribed to my channel, so I would appreciate it if you would hit subscribe. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers and that's kind of my goal for 2022. Till next time, this is Navy 98 saying, go Navy.